video and a boost leak check on this D13 Volvo and <clears throat> I'm going to be installing a tool right into the elbow of the turbo uh, cold side inlet and it's going to pressurize everything through the turbo CAC pipe all the way down into the charger cooler across the front of the cooler on the passenger side right here this top is the most common place where it leaks on the cooler here and as you go down pull the bug screen away so you can see towards the bottom of the charger cooler is where it leaks at top on the passenger side top and the bottom right where it uh, wells to the side <clears throat> then I go on this side I go through all these pipes this clamp here this clamp on the uh, rubber pipe intake preheater there's two gaskets here and an intake manifold. On the intake manifold, very common it leaks in the back. That's if you have a boost leak for a very long time and, it, and the heat goes all the way across the cooler and the intake manifold gets heat up, gets, yeah, heat up and the back normally cracks there. That's if it's a very bad leak. You want to, what I use is soapy water and I spray it down all along here and every connection every every hose connection o-ring what i use is this tool right here so it's an air pressure regulator 3 8 hose the push fitting from a truck took a five inch exhaust pipe i welded it I capped it off Welded it, welded all the way around, and I did the same inside. Drilled the hole, installed the fitting. You can go elbow or 90, whatever is easier. I want the 90 because that way uh, works better for me. And also, you need a little lip right here. You weld it on there, or you weld around, and you get that lip. So if you don't have that, um, it... Uh, can slip out out of the uh, rubber boot. The so tools installed right here. Eight millimeter clamp. Tighten it down. You don't need to tighten it too hard. Just make sure it's tight uh, because if you go too tight, it uh, it strips out the clamp. It's not melt. It's not meant for pressure. And then I grab my soapy water, but dish soap and water. And then I spray down all the connections. So start from the turbo inlet, temperature sensor, right here. Also, this is a clamp that clamps the snail to the turbo. It does leak sometimes there, not very often. See how this clamp <clears throat> has some space, and this one has no space. This is the wrong clamp for this. There's two types of clamp clamps you can get from a dealership. I'll try to attach them in the description. And the bigger one, the bigger one, you can use them <clears throat> on the elbow and on the end. They work, but on the middle right here here they're uh, just a little too too big and they don't they don't seal you just end up running into each other and uh, they don't, doesn't seal like this one right here you can see it's bubbling and I got barely any pressure so once 
once I check the pipe, I see that this is leaking his new clamp. Air also. When it goes through the cooler onto the driver's side, it comes back through the EGR crossover pipe. This is a GR Delta P Venturi into the elbow and into the EGR cooler. So you need to check for boost leaks here too. Delta P mounting and one of the most common spots is the EGR temperature sensor where it bolts in, it leaks in, leaks there really uh, quite common. <clears throat> so the amount of pressure I supply to the charger system um, really doesn't matter because of, it goes straight into the, inside the motor and depending on what valves are open, depend, uh, show you how much pressure you'll be able to build up. So I usually just go visually, just give it some pressure until this one starts to flex out a little, a little bit. You don't want to give it too much because it can come out big boom. Um, and you just kind of make sure there's some pressure. You won't be able to give it enough, give it enough pressure when you're driving. So anything that leaks now, it will leak when you're driving, especially loaded uphill. Once I check any sealing point, O-ring, I go on to the charger cooler. Okay, on the front of the cooler, I spray it down here. And on the camera, it's hard to see, but you also want to peek in from the back just to see if there's any bubbling. Or between the radiator and the charger cooler. This cooler looks <coughs> looks good. So, uh, excuse my light. Uh, see, so I start from the top and I just go down behind, spray behind the condenser, so all the way down. See nothing really bubbling and leaking. I pulled the bug screen forward just for the video. Normally, don't don't do this. This is the ambient air temperature sensor. It is right in front of the, right under the condenser in front of the charger cooler. So, the sensor, this one's good, it's sitting there, but even if it's good, I like to push it back and zip tie it. Make sure it doesn't fall because if this sensor falls and it rubs through your cooler, um, you're in for a thousand bucks to change your cooler. I like to zip tie that sensor before it goes bad or where it falls. This is on the driver's side. Go through and I spray the whole rubber pipe because sometimes these metal rings will rub through and it'll leak. back to the intake manifold and if you can get all the way to where <clears throat> it stops so that's a pretty simple boost leak that could save you um, probably thousands of dollars in fuel um, right after you make the tool you can buy it online um, there's some guys selling that tool online you can install it and use it uh, but yeah, hope this helps. It's something you can do yourself um, if you're 
truck is consuming too much fuel, uh, region, constant region, or uh, poor fuel economy, this will help you out. What's the boost leg is number one thing you need to check if you're having region power issues. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope this helps.